Hey guys, well, we're going in deep, and this time it's gonna be on Mopar alternators. Okay, so I got a couple in front of me, and I got the Mopar parts book out. So I'll tell you what's up. So a while back, I was on the A-Body forum, and I was looking for some information on an alternator. I had the number off of it. I just kind of kind of peruse the forums and see if I could uh, get some information on this alternator because I couldn't find it in the parts book. Well, as it happened, I ran across a little thing that somebody said in the thread there on one of the posts, and they were saying, they said, you know, they said, I was looking, they were looking in their parts book, and they said, I noticed, they noticed that like about 1974 on up, Chrysler was using the same parts for the different rating alternators. I thought, well, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all, but I thought, I'm going to look into that a little bit further. So through my parts collecting, I've wound up, believe it or not, I've wound up with two of the exact same year and month and everything alternators in front of me they're both 1974 alternators they are both built the 27th week of 1974 which is somewhere in about oh late july somewhere in there maybe and so maybe august so they were probably built for a very late 74 or a 75 car and they are all original i verified that i don't buy them unless they are all original and so I'm not at this point going to tell you how I know that, but they are. So I'm, I feel confident in the information and the stuff I'm going to tell you. So the first one I have in front of me is, you have to kind of just bear with me on this tag. It's got a gold tag on it, the part number. They don't stamp them in here. There are numbers cast on these halves, but they don't mean anything. So we're looking at this part number. This part number is 3755403. The date on it is 27th of 4, and then if we looked over here, it's kind of hard to see, but it says 34 amp right there. It's got a gold tag on it. And then the other alternator I have is, actually is a 74, I think. I don't know. They changed uh, right there at the time. They had changeover, I guess. But this one is a part number. What do we got there? This tag is not loose. 3755. 411, I think it is, on this one. Similar. It's not necessarily important what it is, but this one's also original. It's a 50 amp, same date code on it. And uh, like I said, I have ways of knowing if they've been apart and been put back together with different parts and they have not. Everything matches. So I thought, okay, well, let's just look at this. Let's see if, if, that's, if that's correct. Let's see if Chrysler decided that they could shaft customers by just putting one alternator on cars and charging you for a higher amp alternator, which, as it turns out, they, they, let's put it this way, they, they screwed you on the price for the alternator, but they didn't screw you on the alternator. And let me explain what that means. And so we take that part number there, that 3755403, if we go to the parts book over here, let the camera do its thing here, we look up here at the top, right there, 3755403, it's the one right on the very, right there, that's the pulley number, single groove, it's a 34 amp, it's used on everything. So if we come down here, this book has got all the parts that go in an alternator, and the main two things that, that I'm aware of that um, dictate the the amperage capacity, not the amperage it puts out all the time, but the amperage at its maximum amperage capacity is going to be the rotor and the stator. So you can correct me if I'm mistaken there. But so we're looking down through here, and let me see where we got to go to that. I think. Let's see regulator. Yeah, here we go. Alternator assemblies. So if we come back up here, there's. There's our part number list right there. You see that in the middle? It says 3755403, Well, wait a minute. Those are different alternator part numbers. If we did flip back over here, what's what are we looking at here? 
404, 403, 404, and 406. So what are those applications? All right, back to the list here. We know that the, oh, what's 405? 403 is a 34 amp, 404 is a 41 amp, 406 is a 50 amp, 407 for reference is a 60 amp. So you have four different ratings, 34, 41, 50, and 60. And they have different part numbers depending on if it's a single groove or a double groove pulley. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a car that somebody stuck one of these Rayman alternators on and they put a double groove pulley where there's not supposed to be one. Don't do that. So anyway, so I got really fascinated at this point with this. And I thought, aha, they did do that. That's exactly what that guy was talking about. So we go down the list here. And we're looking to see if our rotor and stator, which is right here, those two line items right there. See, we're not talking about those, but we're talking about this one. So that means there's only one number for a rotor, 3755, 356, and then one number for a stator, 343, 8754. So that means that these alternators were built all the same, no matter what the rating was on it. So there's a 60 amp. That's the one we didn't, we knew is a 60 amp on there, and it's different. See, it's got different. It has a different uh, rotor and a different stator. So it was built differently. So I thought, aha, I caught you. Sure enough. So that's what they were doing, apparently. Chrysler used to, in the past, they actually built different alternators. Back in the late 60s, mid late 60s, especially when, when air conditioning became more common you would have the base cars like a slant six with no air conditioning would have a 34 amp alternator which is what that's supposed to be it's what they say it is and then the v8 would have like a 41 amp and then any car that had air conditioning would have a 50 amp and no matter what it was a slant six or a v8 and then a car that had uh, you know if they want an optional 60 amp alternator which was not common, um, then they could order one. But the funny thing is, see, they charge customers for these 50 amp alternators when it already had one on it. See what I'm saying? You, you, follow, you, you need to follow my thinking here. It, these all went on air conditioning cars. Um, so, you know, what I'm saying is if they built these alternators the same and they called one a 50 amp, and it actually is a 50 amp, I can tell by the color of the stator in here, then if they're all built the same according to the parts book, then this is also a 50 amp alternator, even if it does have, you know, it didn't go on the, an air conditioning car. So, so they gave you, it's funny because they gave you a better alternator, but if you ever ordered one of these alternators, if you went in there and you said, okay, I have a slant six, duster or whatever and i'm just not satisfied with a 34 amp alternator or the salesman was just trying to make some money on the sale of the car he'd say well you really need this 50 amp alternator you know and they paid money for a 50 amp alternator. they're paying for something they already had they didn't know that and chrysler as honest as they are they apparently didn't tell them either which you know i don't know you, you tell me what you think about that if that's really I mean, it's kind of a, like I said, it's kind of a cheap, but it's kind of not. It's kind of like if you you get a slant six with no air conditioning, then you've already got a 50 amp alternator. But if you if they upsold you to order a better alternator on a car that didn't already have it, have it, then they were kind of ripping you off a little bit. And you see why Chrysler's doing it, because they don't have to keep building all these different, they could only use two different kinds of stators, two different kinds of rotors, for every alternator they put on everything. And we're not talking about the police versions, like with the least Neville alternators and all that, Not we're not talking about that, so. Anyway, so as final confirmation of this, <laughs> this grift, then you look in here at the stator color, See how it might be kind of washed out, but it's kind of a green color. Get back further away, it's a little bit shows up a little better. That's a green stator. It's green over here. The stator is the part with all the wires in it. This old phone plays its heart. And then you come over to this one, guess what it's got in it? It's a 34 amp alternator. 
and it's got a green stator in it. And like I said, I'm sure this thing is, it's original. I know, I mean, I can, if somebody cares to challenge me on it to prove that it is, I can prove it. I'm just not showing you right now because I kind of like to keep my secrets to myself because uh, I may tell you at some point. But anyway, it's not a big deal. You can figure it out. If you do a little bit of Googling, you'll know. So I got to. So anyway, I thought that was amusing that this was <laughs> just, you know, I love these parts books and we, we kind of, more or less caught him at something and that guy was right so this is the one that's going to go on my swinger out there because it's got a no name reman and i can replace it it's supposed to have a 50 amp on it and this is the one it's supposed to have i don't care if it's a little bit early but it's all right same deal they started using a lot of the same parts when i was 74 and 5 and all that on it they just kind of were thinning it down and i think the next video i'm going to do i may do it coming up pretty soon is I want to tell you about my swinger out there that dark swinger it's a 75 model and that's probably one of the very last 75 dark swingers that came off this semi line and I got several ways that I know that and I'll share those with you coming up so anyway I hope you had a hope you got a charge out of this video um, I know my buddy down there me and my Bob he's he's went through alternator trouble and uh, you know, they sell these alternators that they advertise as 60 amp alternators. I'm, if I can ever afford one, I'm going to buy an alternator tester that will load test an alternator. And that'd be so fun because we can put these alternators on there. First, we'll see if they work. And then this the guy that sold me this one, he said he knew it did. But we can put these alternators on there and see if they actually put out what they're supposed to put out. Because I've actually, in my collection of parts i've actually got an unrebuilt 60 amp alternator and i know that um because it's like it's like tyler tyler durden i know it because tyler knows it anyway and another little tip i give you a little tidbit about these alternators i won't re i won't retain or restrict all the information i know about them but you can kind of get an idea of what the amperage is on them by before these these years, like 73, 2, 1, 71, 70, 69 on down. If you don't have, you can't find the, you know, some reason that you can't read the part number off of it, then look at the stator color. If it's got a gold colored stator, which is the wiry looking thing, then it's a 30 or 34 amp, something like that. If it's uh, got a, uh, what color is the next one? a oh what is a gold one supposed to have a gold there's a gold that's a gold one and then the red one that's right the red one's a 41 41 amp if you got a red one it's got it should be a 41 amp alternator if it's got blue i'm sorry green i'm thinking ahead if it's got green it is a 50 amp like this one and if it has a bright blue stator this is not blue it looks kind of bluish in there but it's not and that's a 60 amp. So there you go. That's why, you know, I just don't buy these aftermarket alternators because I don't know, you don't know what's in them. You go to the parts store, you don't know what's in those either. I've seen just about every, I, I'll tell you this, I think it's the same deal with those because every reman alternator I've ever seen that's come on one of these cars I bought has always had a red stator in it. So that would mean about a 40 or 41 amp alternator. Yeah, all things the same. So, all right, guys. Well, let me get off here. I'll post this up for you now. And uh, thank you for watching, and we will talk to you later on. Have a good one.